Hey, welcome to another episode of We Are Not Going to Let This Stinking Virus Stop Urban Forestry in Minnesota. So this segment, by the way, I'm Gary Johnson. I'm a professor of urban forestry at the University of Minnesota, and we are on the St. Paul campus. And this segment is going to be devoted to going to the clinic. Not probably what you may be thinking of the clinic you've been to lately, but this is one if you have an ailing tree or an ailing shrub and you are fed up with scratching your head trying to figure out what it is and every time you ask somebody else what it is you get a different answer and finally you decide that there, there must be a service somewhere that can help out. Well there is and it's right here on the beautiful St. Paul campus and it's the Plant Disease Clinic which is a clinic with the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Minnesota. <clears throat> so we're gonna start off by, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help save you a lot of money right from the beginning, potentially 40 bucks. If you like to gamble, uh, don't listen to anything I'm gonna say now. If you like saving 40 bucks, uh, pay attention to me. So when you come to the campus, by the way, we're on Gortner Avenue here and I'll give you uh, an address for the building pretty soon, but um, don't park anywhere else that doesn't have a meter. So if you, you park here, feed the meter, it's not gonna take you long, it's not gonna cost you much money, and then we're gonna walk up to the plant disease clinic from here, and I'm gonna show you where not to park if you wanna save 40 bucks. So, what do you say, Ryan? Ready to hit the road? Let's go. Let's go. All right, here we are. And this is where I'm gonna save you some money. First of all, the plant disease clinic is in Stakeman Hall. Right there is the sign, 1519 Gortner Avenue, Stakeman Hall. You are at the place. Second thing, look behind me. See this very, very seductive parking pad here? Do not do it. You'll get to the end, you'll say this is only for certain vehicles, and those certain vehicles do not include you. And sure as heck, if you think, oh, it's only gonna take a minute, I'll quick run in, the cops will get you. So, don't park there, save yourself 40 bucks, and uh, take a look around too, they give you a little bit of an orientation. Um, we saw the Cargill building back there by the metered lot, across the street from here are the greenhouses. Um, as you're coming in off of, for instance, Larpenter Avenue, you go through the first stop sign and then start looking on your right. We're about oh, 100 yards from that stop sign and right across from the greenhouses. And that's where you'll see beautiful Stakeman Hall. So let's go up the steps. We'll show you where the drop-off box is and hopefully we're gonna find the director of the plant disease clinic waiting for us. Come on, Ryan. Okay, I know it's taken forever to get up here, but we got a lot of time to kill and you're getting CEUs for this, so stop your complaining. Once you get up to the front door, well, you know what? Normally, you'd be able to go into the plant disease clinic and fill out the forms and everything. But thanks to this stupid virus, you can't do that anymore. What you can do is look on front steps here and you'll see plant disease clinic sample drop off. and there's forms there, you fill out the forms, put your name and everything. And you'll also notice that there is a phone number and you call that phone number when you drop it off. And that kind of um, alerts them that there's a sample out there waiting to be picked up and assessed and you're good to go. Let's go up to the front door now and see if, uh, so let's see if Brett's around. Maybe he can take us back into the lab and answer a few questions for us. Walk this way. I better mask up though. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna see if Brett, Brett Aarons, the director of the lab is here, but before I knock on the door to see if he's in, I have to mask up and do not make fun of me. So here we go. Ah, perfect. Hey, hey Brett, so this is Brett Aarons. 
He's the director for the plant disease clinic and hopefully he's going to take us for a walk down the hallway and into the lab and give us some pointers on how to submit samples and how the diagnostic process goes on here and what we do if we need more information. Right, Brett? That's right. Let's come on in and see what okay. you got. All right, so we're in the lab with Brett Ahrens now, his Sanctum Sanctorum. And Brett, could you tell us a little bit about the services that the uh, plant disease clinic uh, offers? Sure, so the clinic has been operating since uh, 1956, and we provide diagnostic service for anyone that wants to submit a sample. We work with uh, federal and state agencies, we work with farmers, we work with professional horticulturalists, tree care companies, as well as just the general public. So I imagine like with everything else, there are best practices for submitting samples. Could you, could you kind of give us an idea of ideally when you go out and you pick up the samples in that box up front, you go, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I needed. So yeah, there's definitely some good things to bear in mind. Um, you know, it depends a little bit on what type of plant it is, but ideally, if we have possible, we can have a whole entire plant so that it's possible to look at the roots, the, um, the stem, as well as the leaves. Uh, there are a few things that, for example, they can affect the roots and they cause symptoms on the leaves. But if all we get brought in are just the leaves, it's not possible to diagnose them. Um, a second thing to think about is that it's really good to have plants that are still living. It can be very difficult to diagnose dead plants because you get all kinds of different microorganisms that come into that material and they make it difficult to find out uh, the reason the actual the plant actually died in the first place. Well, okay. Now, having said that, uh, I have a sample here, and I, I'd like you to tell us if it is a, a good sample, something you can actually work from, and if it's a really good sample. Um, it came from me. It was in my truck. It's been there for for like four months. Uh, actually, like eight months now, I think. And if it's a really bad sample, it was actually Ryan that <laughs> put it in my truck. Sure, like, yeah, okay. All right, so it looks like we got here uh, some sort of oak here. So yeah, this is, uh, would be a very tricky sample to work with for a couple of reasons. Um, for one reason, it's dead. It's been dead for quite a while now. So it doesn't have um, that living tissue, you know, that transition zone between living and uh, disease tissue. That's really the optimal place to look for disease. So this is all dead. That's going to be an issue. And secondly, you know, for oaks, of course, one of the things we test for is oak wilt. And with oak wilt, we really like to see branches that are at least sort of half an inch to an inch in diameter. Because um, even if a tree has oak wilt, it's not necessarily distributed universally, like uniformly throughout the whole tree. And so it's good to have some more tissue to actually work with um, to look at. So as an example of a um, sample that would be better, we have um, some material here. So a couple things. First of all, this is a, definitely a bigger branch. You can see it has the required diameter here, right? And also it's still got some green leaves attached to it. Okay, so you can tell the sample isn't totally dead. So this would be a better type of sample to bring in. And what we would actually do with this if we were trying to um, you know, test it for oak wilt is we would peel back the bark, right, sterilely, and then we would um, look for areas of discoloration, and then we would collect wood from that material and actually grow it out on different types of media, which can take a week or two to actually look for the organism that causes oak wilt. And working with a sample like this that you brought, um, it would be very difficult to actually find the oak wilt fungus, even if that was the reason that this, um, this little end of the branch had died. Okay, so you, that was really interesting uh, discussion on how you diagnose oak wilt. Um, is that fairly s standard operating procedure here? When you get something in, you try to culture out to see if you can identify the causal agent? Or sometimes you just look at it and go, oh, 
I know what this is. So that's going to be true for things like oak wilt, verticillium wilt, and uh, Dutch elm disease. The various wilt diseases of trees where oftentimes do have to culture them out. Uh, in other cases, it can be a foliar issue. And um, for those kinds of things, oftentimes we can use the microscope to actually uh, detect them. In other cases, we do have to do you know, different types of steps. For example, um, with some fungal diseases, they're not yet sort of sporulating. So we have to try to induce that to occur. So what we'll do is put it in like a plastic bag with a wet paper towel, let it sit for a few days, and then actually look at it again to see if that material is actually um, you know, forming some spores and we can actually identify it. So if people, you know, homeowners, municipal workers, private tree care companies have questions about all the different services you offer, timelines, pricing, you, you do charge, right? We do charge, actually, yes. Um, we are really dependent on the fees that we charge to keep the, to keep the lab open. Um, as far as a place to find information, we have a website. It's pdc.umn.edu. And on the website, you'll find submission forms that you can print out and fill out, or you can um, fill them out digitally and email them to us. And there's information about uh, the services we provide, the fees we charge, how to submit a sample, our business hours, and uh, really how to get, in, get a hold of us if you still have a question. Great. Well, we can't thank you enough for all your time. Virtual fist bump. <laughs> thank you. I should have worn my Tommy Bahama today. You got a Tommy Bahama? Oh yeah, I like Tommy Bahama.